let's go ahead and do a comparison between WriterZen and Phrase.io. Now both of these tools are SEO optimization tools in which you can use to find and research blog post topics and you can also optimize new or existing blog post content to help increase the likeliness of ranking on the first page of Google. In order to do a fair comparison, we'll be looking at things such as pricing, specific features such as the topic research and the content optimization tools. We'll also be taking a look at the AI writers included in both Writer Zen and Phrase. And lastly, we'll be looking at how easy or beginner friendly both of these optimization tools are. So stick around until the end of this video in which I'll give an overall rating of both Writer Zen and Phrase IO and give my recommendations as to which is the better SEO optimization tool. Let's first start by comparing the pricing between both Writer Zen and Phrase IO. The regular monthly plan for Writer Zen starts at $39 per month and gives you 50 keyword lookups, 25,000 credits, and you get a couple other features included here. But most importantly, you get 50 content briefs each month. So you can optimize up to 50 articles each month. Now let's head over to Phrase and take a look at the pricing. And their basic plan starts at $45 per month. And this gives you 30 document credits. So again, you can optimize uh, 30 articles each month. So of course, on Writer's End, for less money, you're able to optimize more content. So if we were to just compare the basic monthly plans, then of course, Writer's End would be a better option. But something to keep in mind, at the time of recording this video, Writer's End still has their lifetime deal available on AppSumo. So it starts at $80, but instead of paying monthly, the one-time payment of $80 will give you lifetime access to Writer's End, and you'd be able to have 50 keywords, 50 topic lookups, 25,000 words checked per day, 25,000 keyword credits, but most importantly, you also get 50 content briefs per month. So that means you can optimize up to 50 pieces of article each month. And again, this is just $80 one-time payment. So of course, this plan is a lot better than Writer's End's regular monthly plan and definitely much better than Phrase IO's monthly plan as well. And if you wanted to get a larger plan, you can always go ahead and get the double and multiple plans, which will give you more keywords, more topics, and more content briefs each month. So when it comes to pricing, I'd have to go with Writer's End over Phrase IO. Even the regular monthly plan is a lot lower compared to Phrase, and you're able to optimize a lot of content. But if the lifetime deal is still available, this is an absolute steal. For a one-time payment, you're able to get even more content briefs um, from the regular monthly plan, but you're also able to save a lot of money in the long run because again, you're just paying one time for this lifetime deal. I'll go ahead and leave a free trial for both Writer Zen and Phrase IO in the description below. I'll also leave a link for the AppSumo lifetime deal if it is still available. Now let's move on and look at some specific features and tools included in Phrase and Writer Zen. Uh, let's start by taking a look at some keyword research tools. Now, once you have a plan for Writer Zen, this is what your dashboard will look like. And as you can see, if we scroll down, these are going to be the main features and tools in which you'd be using. So we have the topic discovery tool, which allows you to find topics, content creator tool, which allows you to optimize your content and keyword explorer tool, which will help you to validate any ideas that you may have found. And we have a plagiarism checker included. Now, this is what the dashboard of phrase will look like. As you can see, we have the outline on the left hand side, templates, um, analytics, and the documents in which you're creating. So right off the bat, we can see that there's not any specific keyword research tools included in phrase. Uh, when compared to writers and we do have the option to um, create some input here for keywords and we'll be able to get some related questions and some outlines so i do have some experience with writers and and with phrase and the keyword explorer feature in writers and is a lot better because it's specifically made to do keyword research so in order to get started you want to go ahead and enter your seed keyword so for instance if you wanted to find some keyword information about keto you wanna go ahead and enter that seed keyword. And the first thing you'll see is the SERP overview. So these are the top ranked websites for this specific keyword. But if you scroll down, you'll also be able to see the trend for this specific keyword. So just like other keyword research tools in the market, you can go ahead and include certain keywords, exclude certain keywords, have a minimum volume, a minimum word count. And you can also go ahead and add a golden filter. Now the golden filter will give you two new metrics which will allow you to see the keyword difficulty and how many blog posts have that specific keyword on Google. So these are two very, very useful features. 
and you definitely want to go ahead and use the golden filter when doing your keyword research. But as you can see, just by searching up our keyword, we have a lot, a lot of keyword um, ideas here in which we can go through. And again, we can always change this to phrase match, having same terms and also search for as well, just to get some more keyword ideas. And if you head over to insights, this will show you different questions, prepositions, comparisons um, for this specific keyword. So again, we can see what is a keto diet, um, how keto diet works, why, where, so on and so forth. So again, you get a lot of different ideas and a lot of keyword research information from writers in. Now let's head back over to phrase and go ahead and enter our keyword, um, which will be the same thing in which we searched up in writers in. So the first step will auto complete the keyword. So we searched up keto, but as we can see, we got keto diet, keto recipes, keto snacks, keto bread, and so on. So the second step would be related questions. So depending on that keyword, phrase IO will pull some of the most commonly asked questions from Google. And as you can see, you can go ahead and click any one of those specific um, questions, and this will go onto your outline section. So this will be a nice linear way in which you um, can follow to create your outline for your blog post. And again, you can go to the different variations of that specific keyword. And again, do the same thing. Go ahead and click um, onto the questions in which you like the best. And there you go. You sort of start to formulate an outline um, for this specific topic. And while this can be very useful, if you already know exactly what you're writing about, it doesn't really give you information about this specific keyword. I'm not really able to validate or get some metrics on this specific keyword to see if it's worthwhile um, for me to write about. So I don't really get that information here in phrase, even though I do like that I'm able to um, set up my outline in a really nice way. So, so you would definitely need to get an external keyword research tool. And once you've validated that keyword or found some good keywords, then go ahead and build your outline on phrase. And this is also true for the topic discovery tools included in writer's end. So again, you can use this tool to help you find some ideas or clusters of ideas for your blog post topic. Again, you want to go ahead and enter that keyword. Once you go ahead and search up your topic, you're able to see the search volume and some keyword ideas. And you're also able to see some questions on the right hand side. So we have questions, prepositions and comparisons. And again, we can go ahead and add this onto our list and start building our outline um, in the same way as we sort of did on phrase. So for keyword research and topic research tools, I'm going to go with writer's end over phrase. You're able to do a lot more deep research and really able to find some important information about keywords or topics before going ahead and writing about those topics in writer's end when compared to phrase. So now that we've taken a look at the keyword and topic research tools, let's go ahead and look at the content optimization tools included in both writer's end and phrase IO. And in order to start optimizing your content on writer's end, you want to head over to the content creator. Now this is where you'd set up your blog post and start doing your optimization. First thing you want to do is enter your seed keyword and go ahead and click add. And once you do so, writer's end will pull all of the most relevant information about that keyword to give you some recommendations for keywords, for topics, for outline ideas that you need to include within this blog post if you want to rank on the first page of Google. So this is the competitive analysis that we get back from writer's end. So we'd be able to see um, all of the top ranked blog posts for this specific keywords and the word count on the right hand side. And this is nice that this is updated um, today. So we know that all of this information is relevant. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to see the suggest insights. So these are people also ask questions, topic that people discussed, how people compare. And you're also able to find some questions or topics that people are talking about um, relating to this keyword on Reddit. This is pretty unique that it pulls from Reddit and can get you some pretty unique ideas for that keyword. And on the right hand side, you'd see some content structure. So these suggestions are based on the competitive landscape. So, so it doesn't give you an absolute in terms of an amount that you need to write for this blog post to rank on the first page of Google. As you increase the amount of words for that blog post, it will tell you how long this blog post is compared to all of the competitors. So you'd want to be probably higher than 80, 85, 90% of your competitors if you want to rank on the first page of Google. And once you're happy with your competitive analysis and your content structure, you want to go ahead and set up your keywords. The idea here is to go ahead and add these questions or these topics onto the right hand side and start building 
your outline. And the next step will show you some even more keywords that you can include within this blog post. So this is nice because it pulls up some um, keywords in which you may not have found um, and also shows you some opportunities for new keywords to include within your blog post. So you'd obviously want to go through this, whichever one you like the best, you can go ahead and click on that and you'd actually be able to see um, a little bit of a summary of this keyword and how it was used in the top ranked blogs on Google. So this is really, really good information and you're able to do some deep research to see whether or not you want to include that keyword within your blog post. So obviously if the top rank blogs are using those keywords, um, you want to go ahead and include that within your blog. And once you're happy with your keywords, you want to go ahead and save and begin writing. Now this is where you'd be able to paste your content um, in writer's end and on the right hand side, you'd be able to see your overall score. So of course, once you start writing some content, this score will improve. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see your keywords. So this will be the keywords in which you selected and which writers and things that um, you need to include in this blog post if you want to rank. And it'll show you how many times you need to include that within your blog post and also some examples of that keyword being used in blog post. And next to that will be your competitors. If you want to go ahead and quickly check on your competitors, you can go ahead and click this tab and go ahead and go through your competitors. And the last tab would be questions. So again, these are questions um, that you can include in your blog post just to make sure that you're really fulfilling the searcher's intent within your article. And lastly, once you filled out all your content and did all of your optimizations, you can go ahead and check for plagiarized content. Now let's head over to phrase and see how we can optimize new and existing blog post content. So we want to go ahead and start by clicking the new document. And for this example, we'll be creating some new content, not optimizing any of our existing content. And again, we're going to do the same search query. Now, once it's loaded up, you want to go ahead and click let's go. And once you go ahead and click let's go, we can see that phrase is pulling all of the most important information from the top 20 ranked blog posts for this specific keyword. And once it's finished loading, this is what your content brief will look like. First, we can see the word count. So the average word count is telling us that we need to write at least a 3000 word blog post if you want to rank. And we see the information for headers, the amount of links that we need to include and the amount of uh, images that we also need to include. If we scroll down, we can also see the top 10 blogs and we can see their H1 tags um, right in this section. So we can actually go ahead and add that um, into our blog post on the left hand side. And what's pretty cool, if we go ahead and click that, we can also um, start reading what they wrote about that H1 or H2 tag. And again, as you scroll down, you'll be able to see the same information for the top ranked blog post. Another cool feature that's included in phrase is the ability to automate content brief and go ahead and select whatever information you want to include in your content brief. And once you go ahead and create your automated content brief, you'd be able to see that information on the left hand side. So this will essentially guide you while writing your blog post. So the first um, input will be guidelines. So high level goals and guidelines. The second will be what questions people ask about this specific topic. The third is the SERP overview with their titles and descriptions. We see some topic clusters and then we see some headers. So again, this is just a lot of useful information which you can use um, to really guide your writing when optimizing this blog post for this specific keyword. And once you're finished with your research, you want to head over to outline. Now, this is where you'd be able to sort of, again, compile your outline. So anything that you like here, you can go ahead and add that um, into this section. So you want to go ahead and go through all of the top ranked blogs and whatever H1, H2 tags you like the best, go ahead and add that um, into your outline. And right under the outline is the AI writing templates. So on phrase, they actually have a lot of templates in which you can use to write some copy using AI. So you can go ahead and filter this by SEO, by blog, by Q&A, by marketing, by rewrite and by shorten. And again, there's a lot of templates in which you can choose. Just go ahead and select that title, select the input, the description, and the AI will give you some content just depending on what um, template you're using or what information you're writing about. Now, I don't really use AI copywriters within phrase or even in writer's end. Um, I believe that these are SEO optimization tools and that's why I use them strictly for that. I have a separate external AI copywriter that I use, but again, this is a nice feature to have, um, especially if you don't have access to an external AI copywriter. And the last feature included in the content brief is the optimized feature. Now, once you go ahead into the optimized section, you'd be able to see the keywords that you need to include in your blog post 
and you'll also be able to see how many times you've included that, that keyword and how many times more you have to include that keyword to properly optimize your blog post. And this is really important because when search engines scrape your blog post, they're able to see specific keywords so it understands what your blog post is about, which will increase the likeliness that it will rank you for those specific keywords. In terms of content optimization features and tools, I would give Writer's End a score of 4.5 out of 5 and Phrase a score of 4 out of 5. Both of these tools are really good for optimizing new and existing blog post content, but I do like Writer's End a little bit more because I feel like you're able to get a lot more information and do a little bit more of an in-depth optimization when compared to Phrase. Now, when it comes to AI writers, I believe that Phrase has some of the best templates I've seen in any SEO optimization tools. So I'd give it a score of 4.5 out of 5. And Writers End actually has some AI writer tools included. So I'd give them a score of 4 out of 5. So overall, I would give Writers End a score of 22 out of 25 and Phrase a score of 20 out of 25. I just feel that you're able to get a lot more information and do a lot more deeper optimization with Writer's End when compared to Phrase I.O. But I highly recommend that you go out and you try both of these tools for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description below for both Writer's End and Phrase. If you enjoyed this video, then give us a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the near future. Until next time, stay well.